Hello and welcome back. <laughs> welcome back. Uh, why are noses so hard to paint <laughs> in watercolor? Well, one of the reasons is because uh, we have to we have to paint it on uh, wet paper, which many people find hard to control. So today I thought I would address that with painting a nose. This is in line with uh, some of the other facial features that I have been doing in my Wednesday morning lives. And uh, yeah, so we're going to take a look at that. This is my reference. And there we go. Um, this was actually a picture that I pulled off of uh, Pixabay. And uh, I zoomed really in on it. It was very hard to find just a re reference of only a nose. So I took a face and I, I zoomed in on a nose. And I took it and I um, adjusted it in the, the uh, photo settings in order to be able to accentuate some of the shadows and highlights. You might find this helpful. Um, one thing that I have noticed is that if you work uh, from a photograph that is lit from the front, you don't get any shadows on the nose. That makes it extra hard to paint. Uh, but there are shapes to the nose, so let's talk about those. I'm going to be working on Arches 140 pound cold press paper, and uh, I'm using a palette of mainly Da Vinci watercolors. Uh, you can see I put some water in each of the uh, each of the wells in order to soften up the color, and that's uh, while I'm drawing, that's going to be soaking into my paint so that I can paint with nice creamy color not uh, not trying to get uh, some good color out of a uh, dried well all right so in terms of the nose <laughs> the nose actually reaches all the way up to the eyebrows uh, because we have you know here's the eyebrows and you can see this shadow that follows straight down and then there's a ball on the end we, we all kind of know about the little ball on the end uh, but that has to be a very soft ball, <laughs> you know, no edges to it sort of thing. So when I'm drawing this, I have to draw it quite lightly. Uh, I will draw it a little darker than I normally would just so that the camera can pick it up. But uh, here we go. So I do a little practice run here with my, with my uh, pencil, right? There's my, the ball of the nose. And then I have what I kind of think of as a little seagull. All right, so you've got this nostril and it comes down to the body of the seagull and then it comes back up and makes the other wing. So let's let's do that here. We've got this little seagull that comes down, comes back up and over here. Now each of the wings has a little hook on it. Okay, so can you see the, the little hook on the end? That, I've, I've only, I didn't make that a complete circle. This is a mistake I see quite often is that people will make an entire area that is uh, going to be dark in their painting. And it's, it's like, it's like there was a flat surface or like a piece of wood and you just drilled a hole in it and it's just got this edge to it. So the thing with the nose is that everything's so rounded, <laughs> everything. All right, so we have some little cushioning tissue around the sides of our nostrils and that's going to come down like a little like half a teardrop kind of thing half a teardrop all right and uh, now that by itself is looking okay but there's now, uh, if this person is smiling, which she is, uh, there's this crease that comes down on either side of the mouth. And that, come, that crease comes up into this uh, little teardrop shape. So that's going to come out from here. Now, we have to also uh, consider the height of the nose and where the placement of the eyes are. You know, it's like, Painting the middle of a sandwich without the bread on the top and the bottom. We need the mouth, we need the eyes, in order for the nose to look like it's um, in context with those things. 
So let's do that. Um, let's, I'm just going to have a very quick browse through here through the comments just to make sure I haven't missed any questions so far. I don't think I've had any questions so far, but mostly greetings from all over the world. Thank you. Uh, yeah, if you do have a question, you know, it really helps if you put in capitals because then I spot it right away. All right. So if I make a mistake or if something's a little bit too too dark or something like that, I can use, a, this is one of those kneadable erasers, right? So you soften it up in your hands and knead it and, and that makes it very pliable. And I can blot it on my paper basically to pick up the pencil and that's a lot easier on your watercolor paper than rubbing back and forth that's an abrasive action that you're using when you use a you know a standard eraser like this and you rub 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 you're actually kind of uh, roughing up your surface to paint on so if you can use a kneaded eraser it's a lot easier on your watercolor paper all right so let's let's think in terms of where the mouth is. I'm looking at, let me see, about that far. And so I'm eyeballing these measurements. I'm not actually sort of measuring here and measuring here. I'm kind of doing it um, a little bit sight size, but <laughs> sight size meaning same size. Uh, it, it's it's similar. This this part of the seagull I think could come down a little more. But you've never heard anybody call it a seagull before. <laughs> it's, it's just sort of like, oh, the, it, I've, it's like word association when you're trying to remember somebody's name. If you think of the nose having a seagull, then you'll, you'll remember to put that part in. A little dip in the middle of the lip. All right, so we have that kind of a thing going on there with the mouth. Uh, I won't draw the whole mouth, uh, don't really need to, but there's the positioning of it anyway. Now, one part of the nose that often gets sort of um, neglected, I guess, is the, the bridge of the nose, because that is actually where the, the steepest angles are. So the... Um, uh, the bridge of the nose would be, I'm going to guess, let me, how many, how many of these balls high? Maybe about the third ball high. I'm talking about three balls this size, right? So if I kind of eyeballed that, like a snowman, <laughs> then that would be there. The blue tack eraser is fine too, um, the, uh, if, it's, if it's the putty type. So any putty type of eraser uh, prevents that friction. So that will work pretty well too. Yes, this is just one one brand that I got. I don't know, I've had it so long I don't remember what, what the brand is, but uh, they're very common. All right, so the bridge of the nose is narrower than this ball. Usually, right? You know, people are as varied as snowflakes, so you're going to get... Uh, differences from one person to the next. Obviously, a baby's nose is going to be quite different than, say, um, you know, a sheep herder from Ireland who's been exposed to the sun and he's 85 years old and, and you know, he's obviously going to have a much different nose than a baby. <laughs> so uh, let's, uh, let's carry on here. So I'm putting lines here, but I'm going to remove them. The reason I'm putting them here in the first place is just to orient myself where this highlight's going to be, where the lighter part of her nose is going to be. All right, so we've got the bridge of the nose that comes up to the eyebrows. Okay, and then her, she's got her eyebrows. I'm going to put, I'm just going to start to put where her eyes are going to be because that helps me to uh, visualize whether or not I'm getting this nose correct. Sometimes it's really hard to figure out if you've got something looking right uh, without, without the context of what's around it. 
<laughs> yeah. All right, so I won't I won't put the entire eye in. I just need to put something in there. Um, now I, I have these eyes too close together, I think. Maybe not. Maybe I'm maybe I'm not too bad. But I think I'm gonna push it back just a little bit. Oh, I'm erasing. <laughs> I didn't mean to do that. Okay, so I made this little ball in the nose, but the actual ball on the nose is quite a bit wider. Look, look where the outside shadow is on this nose. It's not quite, but almost as wide as the nostrils themselves. So this little ball was a great sort of starting point, but this part of the nose actually comes to about here. So I'm gonna stretch this little ball out a little bit bigger like that. All right, let's erase the middle part. Okay, I'm going to erase these lines as well. And now I have as many lines as I need. I only want the minimal number of lines. Uh, so often I see people and they're, they're putting hard lines on the nose, you know, in their drawing. And you can't cover that up with your skin tones that you're putting on. So um, it's, it's important to uh, keep that in mind. Now, some of this looks a little, <clears throat> pardon me, it looks a little funny because, uh, because we don't have the shadows in yet. Uh, and, and that's going to make a difference. That also makes it a little bit challenging especially when you're trying to place the distance of the eyes it makes it challenging to do that now sort of a uh, a guideline not a rule but a guideline is that there's one eyelid eye width between the two eyes and we're not seeing the full eye but we can imagine that the eye is about that wide that wide that wide okay so uh, you know, if I were painting a whole face, which hopefully you are at some point, then you would be able to tell whether or not those eyes are too far apart. And if you look at different photos, you can see people, some people have eyes that are further apart, some half closer together. All of those, t there's always those variations like snowflakes. All right, so one of the most important things to remember is that so much of the nose needs to be painted on uh, on wet paper. Unlike you know the eye, we did the we did the uh, um, the skin around the eye and everything, and then we just painted the eye, and we did all the skin around the mouth, including the mouth, the lips, and then we painted the teeth separately, and that was fine because we could paint those things separately. Here we're, we're talking, it's almost like folds in fabric, right? You've got a contour that goes over the cheeks, then it comes in a little bit, then it comes up and over the nose, back down again, back over the cheek. So we need to cre create all these sort of rolling hills of the face. So I'm going to take a, a, a nice soft brush. I'm using a squirrel hair brush here and uh, if you're interested in what supplies I have and all the brand names and where to get them and all of that sort of thing, there is a materials list on my website, which is this um, website right here. So you can look that up if you're if you're interested in getting into the nitty gritties of of all of this. Um, incidentally, this palette everybody always asks me about it. This is a speedball palette. Unfortunately, it's discontinued, and um, will be. Uh, 
you know, I won't be able to um, recommend where to buy that, but there's a similar one by Stephen Quiller. Uh, it's, it's actually square, but it's got the same sort of color wheel in the middle of it, so it's quite similar. And it comes either plastic or ceramic. So I'm going to just wet all of this area here. As I said, my lines are darker than I would have done normally. I just need to do it for the camera so that you get to see what I'm doing. Let me see, maybe I can even zoom in a little closer. So things are pretty wet right now. Um, you know, I just put a lot of water on there. I guess I don't need to go over the eyes really, or I don't need to go around the eyes. I'll just wet all of this. All right, and it's, you can see it's pretty wet. So I'm going to go over to my palette now and mix up my skin tones. I'm going to be using Permanent Rose and some Raw Sienna. To get a fair, fair skinned complexion. Won't be fair skinned if I do it if I don't add enough water to it though. Uh, but I am working on wet paper, so I don't need to make it like uh, too too light because um, it's going to be diluted when I put it on my paper. I'm also going to put in uh, I'm going to put in a little bit of a greenish turquoise color. So I'm taking a little. What is this? This is uh, cobalt turquoise and, and maybe some green. I've got some hooker's green dark here. I just want to put a little green in the face. Uh, that's going to add to the shadows. Why does that work well with the shadows? Because red, this has got a lot of red in it, and green are complementary colors. So this will make a, a convincing shadow. So if I start with this sort of green color, really diluted. I don't want too much green. I want this to be nice and soft. Now, this is this is what I think is the most important thing. You'll all have your own uh, ways of going about this. But for me, I'm going to switch to a slightly smaller brush here. And this is a damp brush, but I'm going to blot this before I go into my, into my paint. Why? Because my surface is wet. If my brush is too wet, it's going to end up being uh, like out of control. So I won't be able to control it. So I'm coming in with some of this shadowy area here that comes around the eye, starts to come down to the cheek. Just putting it in really lightly. I tend to paint um, almost ghost-like uh, to start off with. Just sort of feel my way so that I can visualize and, you know, because I'm a visual learner personally, and I find that if I can uh, put a light, light version in there, first of all, it's easier to correct if, if corrections are needed, but it allows me to see if I'm going in the right direction. I bet a lot of you are the same too. Most people who paint are visual learners, so there, we'll put some of that there. Let's put some of it here. Maybe even under the under the nose there, the bottom of the seagull, just a little bit there. Even under the nostrils too, because under the nostrils, you know, basically the nose pro protrudes like a little canopy, and so it shades the nose. Okay, I'm not going to do too much more with this green. Uh, I don't want it to end up looking too, too dark or anything like that. All right, now I'm coming into my bigger puddle of my um, lighter, lighter skin tone. And here I'm going to uh, come in and I'm going to be paying attention to where the the highlights are now. I, I've addressed the shadows with a little bit of green. Now I'm going to address where the highlights are. And where the highlights are, I'm going to rinse my brush and paint 
clean water or I'm just going to avoid those areas or, and then come back to those and put in clean water for that those spaces. I'm going to go right over this green. Hopefully some of that still shows through. <clears throat> And right at the tip of the nose, like there's a little shine on this, this person's nose. So there's a little shine and I'm going to go around that spot. Leave the spot a little bigger because you know that the paint's going to crawl a little bit and fill in somewhat. Okay, so you see the areas I left. I left the the highest point of the nose and I left that little that little highlight on the tip of the nose. Now I'm getting some stronger color and I'm still working on on damp paper. And I am, I will emphasize that it's damp. What what I look for is that um semi-gloss shine. It's not as shiny as it was when I first put the water on the paper. It has died down a little bit, uh, soaked into the surface of the paper a little bit more before I started painting into it. If I wet it and jump right in with my paint, I really have no control. Skin tone colors, uh, raw sienna and permanent rose are, are what I used for that. For the shadows, I used some, uh, oh, I, I just mixed up a green here with some cobalt, turquoise, and hooker's green dark. Those are kind of obscure colors that you might not have on your palette, but you can mix mix a, a, a cool green for that, and uh, you'll get something that will be more complimentary. So if I mix some of that together, if I, mix, if I take my hooker's green dark and mix it with my, with my skin tone, I get something deeper, a little bit darker here. I think that's a little bit too muddy looking, too much green, right? So let's pull that off and I'm just going to go with stronger color here, more reddish. See, that makes a big difference. I think one of the big mistakes that I was making when I was first starting portraits was my shadows were too, I was trying to darken them. So I was thinking, okay, my highlights are warm and my shadows should be cool, right? So I ended up putting the shadows in and they were too, too gray looking, right? I put in too much, um, too much blue, too much green, and they just looked lifeless. So most of the shadows on a face tend to be more, um, uh, more reddish than I than I was doing. All right, so I'm using a really light touch here, but I'm trying to identify where these darker spots are. Either side of the ball of the nose, right? Make that stand out a little bit. Definitely these corners around the the uh, nostrils. So I didn't really change the ratio in my color. I'm just using less water here. And building up. I probably do have a little more red. Now that I'm looking at it, I probably have a little more red. But I am working with a fairly blotted brush. Now this is where all the control goes out the window, is if you have a brush that's got just too much liquid in it, too much paint, too much water, whatever the case may be. If your brush is too loaded and you're working on a damp surface, uh, you, you're, you have no control. So make sure that you are controlling what's in your brush on a wet surface because otherwise you're, you know, it's just going to bleed all over the place and you won't be able to keep it in the spot that you're trying to keep it. All right, so I'm going to, it's still wet, wet enough, but I'm blotting my brush, you see, and I want to start darkening up a little bit more. 
I've still got the middle of the nose here a little bit too light. I will, uh, I can, I can always tone that down. So toning down something's always easier. Uh, but if I lose the light, I won't be able to get it back. Right, so these are the areas I'm coming in and building up little by little. There's a little bit of a crease there, right, just above her, um, just above the middle of her mouth there. Just because that, you know, she's got a smile there, so she's making a little crease in her upper lip. All right, now some of this, some of this is not, um, is covering up some of the nostril. So I'm just going to use my brush and blot it. Let's rinse that out and make sure it's clean and blot it. And I can pull back some of that color. Let's pull that out. All right, so I was able to pull that out. And this middle of the nose, I'm just going to put a very diluted, with a blotted brush, but a diluted version of the, the other skin tones in there so that it is, uh, you know, not just white paper. All right, doesn't look great yet, does it? <laughs> hopefully, uh, we can. Uh, hopefully, we can recover this one, but it's it's what it's doing. What this stage and and this is you know the ugly stage. We always have those. This ugly stage is basically sorting. It's a sorting exercise where I'm figuring out where those shadows go, figuring out where the highlights go, and it's not dark enough yet that it's irrecoverable if I made a mistake. Uh, you know, I can lift, I can add more at this stage, but I can't do it after it's all, you know, dark and everything, so. So I'm just drying this, and I, I need to stop every once in a while, dry it, because there comes a time in your painting when it's be, it's starting to dry, and you can't, Un you can't stop that process you, you know you really have to um, kind of stop dry it all then I can re-wet and keep, keep going but if I continue and this hasn't uh, had a chance to dry I end up just pulling off the first layers oh I don't know um, let me see if I can add that in I don't think I can edit my video while it's in process. Um, yeah, I'm, I apologize. I'll try and see if I can add that in again afterwards. But for now, I don't think that I'm able to do that. Um, I don't think I'm able to edit that in, in process. Sorry, Dave, I will do that in future. I'll try and remember to do that. Um, if, if I post the... Uh, the video is coming up then you can send me a reminder or pop in um, pop into Facebook and give me a reminder there all right so uh, I and I don't know why it would be turned off maybe it was um maybe there was an update or something and that went away I don't know why but anyway uh, okay so I'm letting that cool down I'm just going to take my brush, hardly any pressure. I want to mention this because so often it's it's easy to just sort of take your brush and you're, you're throwing the paint on or throwing the water on there and you're, you don't realize what you're doing is you're moving the color on the paper. So you, I'm using the lightest possible touch here to apply this water, like no, you know, pressing on my brush, bending my bristles or anything like that. It's a soft bristle brush and I'm putting it on. I'm really trying not to move it around too much, but I want to make sure I also haven't missed any places. All 
All right, so once again, I have a really wet surface, really wet, too much shine. So I'm gonna let that, I'm just gonna let that calm down for a minute before I come in and start building things up. Yes, truth, true self. Uh, I'm going to mix up more of this um, flesh color and I'm going to I'm going to have some areas that I want to have a little bit with a little bit more of the uh, raw sienna and uh, other areas that are going to be a little pink so for example um, it might be a little more pink in here which I've already started but I'm going to put a little more pink in here, but on the bridge of the nose or the, the front of the nose, uh, it's not quite as red, um, which is very different from somebody who's older or somebody who has a cold or something like that where you, your nose is quite red. I know my nose gets quite red if I'm cold. So, um, you know, you, and as you get older, you may have more blood vessels, that sort of thing. So quite often you, the end of the nose is actually red, but this is a younger person and you, so you won't get so much of that. Uh, all right. So I'm going to hold this. I always get dirty hands from doing this, but I, I do it so you can see it on the camera. I'm going to, uh, make sure my brush isn't too wet on this very wet surface and I want to start to build up some of the colors. All right, so this is where I can start to refine some of the shape. Now you'll see that highlight starting to show a little more because I'm darkening around it. And of course, anytime you want something to look lighter, the answer is to make something else look darker. Everything is relative in painting. So I'm creating form here. Uh, forms being very important because, uh, you know, that's, that's the all we have right now. We don't have line. We can't, we can't depend on line because, uh, you know, we're looking straight at a nose and it's like a rolling hill. So we can't depend on line to, to create this nose. We have to depend on these, on these subtle shadows. Just adding a little bit in. All right, so it's it's beginning to take on some form. It's starting to look a little bit more convincing. I just have to build up, and I'm just going to take my time with this. Um, not gonna not gonna hurry it because you know, I'm really trying to make the shapes as accurate as I probably can. So I just keep looking back and forth. Where are the where are those darkest areas? Those are those are important sections to know. Where are those darkest spots? What shape are they? How dark are they? These are all the questions I'm asking myself. So it's fairly dark on those creases. Uh, looks a little strong right now, but we're building. So don't chicken out now. It's easy to to get overwhelmed, you know, at that middle stage of your painting. And this applies to noses or anything that you're doing. Uh, it's very easy to be um, overwhelmed and, and convince yourself that you're in the wrong direction. But you have to really kind of trust that this is all part of the process and that you have to, um, you, you know, your lights are not going to show up until you get the darks in there. And sometimes they just look really funny all by themselves. But if you're just looking at shapes, you'll get there. I'm 
looks a little funny without the eyes painted there, but um, hopefully we're getting a, a convincing nose happening here. Soften that edge. You know, if you get an edge that uh, like, oh no, that that made too hard of a line, probably is telling you that your paper is starting to dry. But you can also dampen a clean brush, right? Get a clean brush, blot it, and soften those edges. If you know, if you have an edge that's hard, just deal with it right away. You can see my pencil lines are not being very well hidden. That's why I said to you that you really need to draw this pretty lightly. Lift any of the excess uh, graphite before you're painting because you it shows. <laughs> it shows through all these colors. Uh, that's, that's the thing with watercolor. And remember that the light areas in your watercolor aren't white. Uh, it's the white of the paper that's shining through the color, so it's the transparency of the color that's uh, making the highlights. Oh, I'm getting harder lines. You know what that means. Time for me to soften these and dry it. made the seagull too too low there all right I'm just going to hint at some of this this darker part of the nostril here that's going to help I just took a little bit I could actually take this color here and if I added a little bit of blue to it let's take some cobalt added a lot little bit to it I get a darker version it's just adding too much that's going to be um, it's going to make it look muddy. Alright, so made it a little darker than it needed to be right there, so lift that out. Alright, got to dry it again. I think she's getting a little narrow in the middle here. I have to I have to pull that out again. I'm going to wait till I dry it though so that I can pull it out evenly. I, I'm not going to pull it out and have like a, a kind of a bald patch in in my wash there. So I dry it all fully. When I'm looking for a portrait to do, and if you've ever drawn a portrait in pencil, and I bet most of you have, uh, what you'll find is that um, you don't you don't pencil the highlights, right? You just avoid them. And we're doing the same thing with watercolor, but uh, sometimes you need an eraser. So uh, I'm going to basically erase some of this. So clean and blot my brush and I can dampen, like soften up that color a little bit. And blot it. In fact, I'm going to wet all of this again and then I'll lift lift that out. Let's take a bigger brush for wetting it. Just go faster. The other thing I find that makes noses so uh, challenging is subtlety. Uh, especially if there's lots and lots of light. 
when you're doing a portrait and you're doing one in pencil, I started to say this earlier, but uh, you start to do a, a portrait in pencil. First thing you're going to notice is that, wow, there's the same light everywhere. How am I going to make that shape? You're going to instantly realize that painting a portrait that's well lit all over the place doesn't create shadows. And without shadows, uh, it makes it very difficult. All right, so again, we're pretty wet, pretty shiny. You can see all the shine on there. And I'm going to continue my building. Make sure my brush isn't too wet. I'm going to build a little bit here, a little bit more on the nose. Here's where I wanted to lift a little bit. I can massage that area. I can also um, darken some areas. The key is to learn to notice uh, or ask yourself, you know, is there is there a difference? The, sometimes the differences between highlight and, and mid value are very subtle. So like on this nose, th this is pretty subtle, but this one down here, this this highlight on the sort of the bridge of the nose is is pretty subtle, too. Picking up some of that, making my adjustments. Okay, so we're getting there. I think we're getting pretty close here. I want to emphasize these shadows a little bit more. Now keep in mind, um, in order for me to sort of illustrate and portray this, what I had to do was take this photograph and put it into my photo editing um, program to see if I could get these a little bit more pronounced. As a painter, I want to pronounce them a little bit more because it's really hard to otherwise um, convey that in painting. So let's take um, my tone here and I'm going to add a little more cobalt blue. Blotting it on my brush here. Get a little bit of that nostril showing up a, a bit more. I don't want to make it too pronounced. I'm even going to put a little bit of this darker color. So you see I'm taking taking this uh, mixture of um, raw sienna and permanent rose, which gives me kind of a peachy color. And uh, you know, peach is in that orange family, right? So I'm going to put a little of the complement in it, blue, cobalt blue is a good complement to that. And I get something, I get a much darker version, dull, duller as well. So it cools it down. Um, uh, yes, uh, uh, let me let me just uh, show this. All right, so Marco's asking if uh, this will be on my website. Yeah, my website, by the way, um, I have a whole page called Free Online Demos. And basically, it's all of these that I've done over the past couple of years. So there's, I don't know, 150 or something like that. So there's, you can see the eye demo. You can see like this lip demo, demo that I did last week. Uh, you know, lots and lots and lots of different subjects. I'm changing it up all the time. Thanks, Margo. And it, it is on YouTube right away. After this is done, the, the it, it stays there. But if you're hunting for it, then you can always look on my website. I, I list them all there.
Oh, wow, too much blue. Let's get more pigment, less water here. Too much. My brush is like hard. I've hardly got any moisture in this brush now because I've blotted it so much. Yes, yes. Whenever, whenever I do uh, a a live stream, these do come up right afterwards as well. All right, that's that's fairly strong. A little bit of a balancing act between um, this yellow color the red color and the blue color because remember you're playing with all three primary colors and if if you mix them all together you get kind of a muddy gray <laughs> it just you know it turns into a mess so you have to play with the ratios you know when you look if I mix this well it's too red so I know that I have to add more raw sienna all right so I have my mixture if I want to darken that, I bring in a little bit of cobalt blue into it. Careful when you're adding that third complement, um, or the third, um, yeah, the third complementary color, that you don't add too much. You can, you, a little goes a long way, you know. It's like, it's like, um, like cooking, right? You, you put a little salt in, you, uh, you test it and then see if you add need to add more so don't don't kill it with uh, a whole cup full of salt <laughs> oh thank you thank you Debbie um, okay so I want to come in to these uh, corners of the of the mouth the smile lines that come around the nostrils Coming in stronger here. Now I can feel my paper starting to dry, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put these marks in. I'm going to rinse my brush and I'm going to soften it. Blot. Don't forget the blot. I'm always saying that, but if you forget to blot, all of a sudden you're going to find you've got this huge uh, mess on your paper. So what I'm doing is I'm laying the brush, cleaning my brush, blotting it, lay it in a clean area, and just with the point of the brush, that's what I'm using to soften. You know, it, it would be easy to try to do it this way. You know, it's a comfortable way to hold my brush, but I need to come at it from this angle, which is awkward. Look at my hand, like I'm turning it around. I could turn it this way to soften it this way. Right. Whatever works, you want to make sure that you're you're creating something a little bit more uh, soft. And once you start putting some of the darker, the darkest darks in there, uh, things really start to take shape. You really can see the form so much better. I get too ambitious and put too many spots in there before I can soften them. I don't want them to dry before I soften them, so gotta go easy here.
some of them some of these seem a little hot you know what I mean like they're just a little bit too too much punch in those shadows and if that happens it's a matter of um, well you can lift some of it but you can also blend some of that in so if I dampen this a little bit I can especially right in the middle here where I've got it extra dark you know if it's too dark then I can soften it the whole thing with facial expressions is the um, softness right you want to maintain the softness And around the nostrils themselves, it's a little darker. Like I said, the, the nose kind of um, overlaps or overhangs the nostrils themselves. So you get this sort of canopy effect where, you know, you've got some shadow under there. Just working to soften up a little bit of this. It's often the under, like the lower edge of the actual nostril that ends up needing to be softened. Oh, thank you very much, Marilyn. That's so nice. Uh, do I eyeball it? Um, yes, a uh, very good question. Um, Do I just eyeball it or do um, how, how do I know if I've gone too dark or dark enough? One of the easiest ways that I have found is using this little isolating tool, which is nothing more than a piece of recycled cardboard, and I punched a hole in the middle. So if I want to know if I got that dark enough, let's try it before I do test this. Okay, I've got my reference picture. I'm going to hold that there. Put it in the same place on my drawing, uh, my painting, to see whether or not I have the value correct. So I can do this throughout my painting, or you can do it on yours. Uh, you know, let's let's see. Am I dark enough? Uh, that's that could be a shade darker, not very much, but you know, so far so good. I'm I'm a little light on the bridge of the nose, though. Look at you can see. I'm, I'm much lighter here on this top of the nose than I need to be. So that tells me I need to tone some of that down. You know, I can build that up. Let's check over here. It looks pretty accurate. Uh, let's, let's check this shadow. I just put this shadow in here. Did I go too dark? No, I'm pretty, pretty accurate. So, you know, I'm doing okay, it seems. And, uh, I just need, I've got the top of the nose here a little bit too, uh, too bright. That makes the, the nose uh, protrude uh, like out a little bit further than it needs to be. So I'm going to, I'm just going to take my big brush, wet this again. And if I'm doing an entire portrait, I'm going to wet the whole face again. Um, and that sounds a little excessive, but uh, the reason that that uh, works is that if I wet only this area that I want to work in, I end up with a waterline, um, a, a mark. Like, you know, if you've ever tried to spot wash a shirt and, you know, it gets this line around it, uh, that's what you're going to get on your painting. So in order to avoid that, you just wet the whole thing. Just don't uh, be aggressive. The more paint you have on here, the more um, 
it's apt to move around because especially if you're building up some of your darks the the dark color can move more easily because more if you've built up a lot of dark there's more paint sitting on the surface of the the paper rather than you know soaking into the paper so much the thin layers have soaked in but the thicker layers of paint uh, sit more on top so those are the ones that can move around pretty easily so you, you do need to be careful of that that's pretty wet so I'm just going to uh, lightly <laughs> lightly pick some of that extra moisture up like that just so that I can keep going here without making you wait And that already feels a little better because I've I've toned that down. It wasn't it was a little too too bright. You can build as fast or as slow as your comfort zone allows, uh, but I think we're we're pretty close here. I just want to maybe get this ball of the nose a little bit more uh, that highlights may be a little large so we'll just shrink that down a little bit the tough part is is not having lines to work with in your in your initial drawing uh, you know, it's like rolling hills, like I said, so there's no lines. It's, it's like a continuous uh, form. So that's what makes noses so much more difficult. And I chose the straight on view because uh, when you have, it's, here's another example here. When you have a side view, you actually do have a line here. So I could take my pencil and actually draw a line right down this nose, right? I don't even see the other nostril it, you know it's that perspective I can see a line there I can see this line here I could draw the top of the nostril but I don't want a line at the bottom because that's going to be a softer edge but I you know I could I could maybe do it lightly since that's dark but this line here could be a crisp line and this line at the bottom needs to be soft um, same sort of thing look for the highlights here's a highlight here Here's another highlight here. And they're really subtle. You really have to kind of look for them. That's why sometimes taking your photo, putting it into your photo editing problem, or problem, photo editing program can, uh, can help you identify those more easily. If you're not sort of accustomed to looking for them, uh, that might help you. Uh, increase the contrast, uh, darken the shadows, lighten the highlights, uh, fiddle around with them a little bit until you adjust your picture. So every photo is going to give you a different result. So uh, there's no, there's no just sort of one absolute way of approaching it. But, um, but that's what I would do. That's what I did in this case because the initial picture, uh, maybe maybe I'll put the original uh, reference picture in the uh, comment section below the video after we, after we've finished. But the. Um, uh, I've changed it. <laughs> I've changed it from the original. I've really cropped it. I increased the contrast so we could see those things. And I really suggest if you're trying to do a portrait, look for something with light, uh, one direct or one stronger light source so that you have those shadows to work with. You have those highlights. I can't tell you how many times I've had students that have brought me uh, school photos of a, a child or a grandchild and uh, I can tell you that they use lights on both sides they use umbrellas they fill up the face with light to show all the details which is great if details is what it's all about but really the values are so much more important so I would definitely uh, look for something with the values 
the stronger shadows. This one was actually a little bit challenging because of the fact that she's got even lighting on her face. Uh, you can tell where the highlight is. It's in front, right? But I chose this one because I knew this would be the most um, challenging. And so if you choose a picture that has stronger light, you're going to find this task a lot easier. So if, if, if you can manage this one, you should be able to manage pretty well with uh, most of the other uh, nose types, you know, turned noses and so on. Uh, but yeah, look, look for, look for the lines that you can put in. You can lightly pencil in the other ones just to help you sort of orient things but take those out before you actually paint. Uh, you want to make sure you, because once you get pencil lines wet, they're in there for good. Like I can see, I can see a pencil line right up here. If like that's there now, I won't be able to take my kneaded eraser or my other eraser and take that out. That's, that's there now. Cause I've, I've wet the graphite and it's now in the paper and it's not coming out if I erase it or anything. Um, yeah, be sure to plot you. Yeah, you guys are uh, helping each other out here with some of the uh, comments. Um, oh, the blue, the blossoms. Okay, so here's a question. Uh, now, why can you soak up the water and not get those blooms you were talking about? And every time I try it, I get two or three. Ha ha. Okay, well, it's because my brush that I'm adding the paint and the water to, with, you know, the paint that I picked up from my palette, I'm making sure this is drier than that. When I blotted, I didn't blot much. I just, you know, I had a, I had almost puddles on there. I, I, I didn't dry the paper. I simply soaked up puddles. And so the paper still had that sort of semi-gloss uh, look to it but I'm always making sure that my brush is drier than my paper I also have to remember that all the time I'm painting my paper's getting drier which means my brush has to get drier but there comes the, the time that you put a brush mark down and it makes a hard edge and that's your signal as soon as you get a hard edge okay it's time to stop blot your brush really well, soften whatever edge was gave you a hard edge and get out of there. Just dry the whole thing, then wet it again, <laughs> and then you can go back in. Just constantly going into something that is really trying to dry and you're not letting it will create blossoms. So that's that's the big answer to that. It's the brush has to be drier than the paper. One or the other has to be wet. So either the if you're working on dry paper, your brush needs to be wet. If you're working on wet paper, your brush needs to be dry, All right? That's sort of my, uh, that's my simplified version of, you know, how to handle that. Your brush has to be dry if you're working on wet. Your uh, brush needs to be wet if you're working on dry. All right, so let's, uh, let's make sure I haven't missed any other questions here. Uh, Oh yeah, the, the these these little holes. These are these are really anybody can make them. Cost you zero dollars. Just you, you know, take something out of your recycling bin and uh, cut and punch a hole in it. Or you know, if you don't have a hole punch, then just cut a little square in the middle of it or something. Just something with two little two little things. The whole idea, the whole concept of this is that this blocks out all this distracting surroundings right these distracting you know highlights and things like that this just tells you is that area the right value and that will help you so that uh, that really works okay so I guess we're going to wrap this one up um, I'm not going to do like um, umpteen different noses but I will show you let me see where did I put that other one I had another one here uh, you could try a whole bunch of different angles. Here we have an upward looking, you know, as if the person's um, standing and the person sitting is taking their picture. You know, you might see the underside of their nose. So you might actually see a lot more of the nostrils. And look at how close the nose is to the eyes, right? They're, they're almost parallel here. So 
always be comparing, comparing, comparing when you're making your drawing. That's really important. If you start with a weak drawing, um, your painting can't save you. So that, keep that in mind. Make sure your drawing is really to your satisfaction before you, um, before you start putting your paint down. Okay, so have a great week, everybody. And uh, here it is uh, late March. We are having uh, Easter this weekend. So I wish all of you a very happy Easter. And we'll see you next week. Bye for now.